Welcome, dear listeners, to Horror Den of Misfits. Story time. My name is Andrew, and I've served in both the National Guard and Special Forces for over a decade. Throughout my career, I've faced countless challenges and dangers, one such ordeal I experienced in the remote forests of the Appalachians. It all started when our unit received a distress call about strange disappearances of locals in a secluded area of the forest. The local authorities were baffled, and rumors of a quote cryptid creature roaming the woods spread like wildfire. As part of a specialized team, it was our duty to investigate and neutralize any potential threat. Incognito, and with government blessing. Our mission began with a sense of excitement mixed with apprehension. We were seasoned veterans, accustomed to handling high-stakes situations, but the unknown always carried an extra layer of tension. Our squad consisted of skilled soldiers, each with their own expertise and combat experience. The forest was dense and eerily quiet as we ventured deeper into its heart. The canopy overhead blocked out most of the sunlight, casting eerie shadows on the forest floor. It was easy to believe that something sinister lurked in the darkness, watching our every move. As night fell, we set up camp and prepared for what lay ahead. That's when we first encountered the creature. It emerged from the shadows, its eyes glowing with an eerie light. It stood on two legs like a massive, muscular wolf, its fur bristling with primal energy. It was a dogman, a definitely live creature. It addicted our camp so we acted swiftly, weapons at the ready but the creature was faster and more agile than anything we'd faced before. It seemed to possess an uncanny intelligence, evading our bullets and hiding in shadows. In the end, it escaped and we pursued it relentlessly. Determined to eliminate him, if not capture. But we lost him. Damn creature was faster than a four-legged wolf. It was as if the forest itself protected him, shielding it from our efforts to capture or kill it. We stayed for few days, searching for tracks or a cave where he lives. Our frustration grew. We were trained to handle human adversaries, not mythical creatures. Doubt crept into our minds. But I refused to give up. I had seen the creature with my own eyes, felt its presence in the depths of the forest. And yes, I was skeptic. In the end, we were forced to withdraw, our mission incomplete. The cryptid remained at large. We made a report to our higher-ups about what we've seen, but they mocked us. Some called it a hoax, others a figment of our imagination. But I know the truth, and I swear by all that is sacred that what we encountered in those dark woods was real. It was New Year's, the last one that had come. My friends and I ventured into a park around 1 a.m. since there were cops on the road, and we didn't want to get caught for drinking or smoking. We headed pretty far in and hid behind a big fallen tree, setting up our picnic rug. We hung out there for a little while until everything became really silent, like dead silent. There were still people further up the road at the lookout we came from, but we couldn't hear them anymore. There was just no noise. My friend pointed out that he could hear a sort of whistling in the trees, almost human-like. When I listened in, I could hear it too. It almost sounded like a human whistling to another human, a few whistles first, and then a response. Not musical whistles either, it almost seemed more like communication. At this point, we decided to leave, all of us getting weird vibes. I should mention there were about five of us that night. We decided to cut further into the park to get back to the main road at the bottom. It's not a big park, at most maybe 2 kilometers in length, so we knew we could reach the road in no time, especially as we were near the bottom. But as we got further down, it became apparent that we were lost. We tried following the path, but it was not maintained, with lots and lots of tall grass making everything confusing. We tried a few offshoots of the path, but not one of them led to the tourist road as they were all overgrown. We saw a bus stop down the hill but decided to keep trekking as we could see it was down a nasty embankment. 
We caught our breath and started off again when my friend, let's call him Baz, and I heard a blood-curdling scream from the trees ahead. It sounded almost like a woman or a little girl screaming at full tilt but had a strange sort of recorded quality. Almost like if you heard it through a speaker or from really far away. Strangely, it sounded close though. Everyone froze, and looks were directed at me, and I just said it was a possum. I have lived in this particular area of the hills for my whole life essentially and have done many night walks. Not once have I heard a possum or an owl make that noise. We continued looking for a way out with no luck, an increasing feeling of dread and fear creeping into our minds. The darkness was thick, thicker than it should be. The moon was almost full, and there was a lot of light that night, but this park seemed extra dark, despite it being very open. At this point, we were all at our wits end. We followed a path, and we could see the road now, but in our path was the largest holly bush I had ever seen, just rife with spikes. We went back yet again to where we started, and my partner gave me his walking stick for getting through brush. I immediately flipped it around and held it like a bat. We wandered a few more steps, and like a miracle, a car drove past, illuminating the bus stop, clearly less than 10 meters from us. We practically ran out of the bush, scrambling down the embankment and speed walking home. It's worth mentioning, I have since researched Australian nocturnal animals, particularly those in the Dandenong ranges, and am yet to find anything that sounded even close to what we heard. To this day, I'm not entirely sure what was in the bushes. It didn't help that my friend made a skinwalker joke when we first heard the whistling either. Anyway, thank you for reading, and any ideas, supernatural or otherwise, on what was out there would be awesome. When my buddies and I were around 15 or 16 years old, we used to sneak off into the woods to smoke because it was the only place where we wouldn't get caught by our parents. We had this favorite spot right on the edge of the woods behind some cedar trees and a randomly placed chain link fence. It was probably around 10 PM and we were all walking to our spot for our late night smoke ritual when something strange happened. As we approached our spot, we noticed what we initially thought was a white cat. It was in the tall grass directly in front of the entrance to the opening that led to our spot. We kept getting closer, assuming that once it noticed us, it would just run away like most animals do. However, as we got closer, it became clear that this wasn't a cat at all. When we were about 15 feet away, the creature stood up straight on two legs, revealing the same stature as a little human. It even sprinted upright into the opening of the woods, just like a person would do. The only difference was that it was white, so I assumed it was its fur or hair. Needless to say, we all panicked and hightailed it back to the house, yelling, what the F was that thing? The next day, in the daylight, we decided to go back to the spot for a morning smoke. That's when we saw the fence in the woods had chunks of orange fur and bloody flesh stuck to it, as if something had been mauled or ripped apart back there. From then on, we always joked about it and referred to it as the skunk ape. It became a topic of conversation every time we hung out, until the sad day when both of the friends who were with me that night passed away. Reading stories and seeing pictures here reminded me of that eerie memory. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona, near a small private airport called Falcon Field. The entire area spanning miles was packed with acres and acres of orange groves before mass development of housing communities. Naturally, as kids, we would run through them and play hide and seek. My father would always warn me, though, about playing in there at night and, of course, discuss what to do if we came across javelina or coyotes. My friend told me this story about her experience in the groves, and it is literally one of the creepiest things I have ever heard, referring to crawlers, and I am curious if anyone in the area has had any similar sightings. There was a patch of orange groves that always gave me the creeps. As an avid runner, I never ran around the area because it made the hair on my arms stand up straight. There was also a temperature change, 
It just became colder, eerier, and was always dark. It was so dark in that area, in fact, that it was often hard to see even with your eyes adjusted. I always felt like I was being watched, and the streetlights never worked on that stretch of road. The only one that did work was always dimmer than the rest of the surrounding lights and would, from time to time, flicker. It gave me the total creeps, to say the least. My friend, who lived in this area, said that she and her friend ventured into the same area of the creepy groves around 10 p.m. one night. We even joked while she told me this story, why out of all the groves, why did she and her friend choose those groves to play in after dark because everyone knew that the specific area just had a weird ominous vibe. To add even more creepiness, the entire area wasn't managed well and was totally overgrown, so you couldn't see well between the lanes of trees, maybe one or two rows in. As bored teenagers go, she said she and her friend were walking through one of the lanes of groves, and they just had the moonlight to guide them. Suddenly, within a minute of walking into the grove, her friend with terrified eyes grabbed her shirt and said, someone is here. And they both bolted for the street. She told me she could hear big heavy footsteps running behind them. They ran until they got to the nearest streetlight, and when they looked back, they saw a tall, over eight feet, pale, thin creature staring at them. They walked backward for a while, staring into the darkness looking at the creature until it ran back into the grove. Then they ran back home. When they finally settled down and caught their breath, she told me she asked her friend how he knew there was someone else there. And he said he saw a massive pale creature in the moonlight lift its torso up from the ground like it had been sleeping in the dirt. All he could do was pull her back by her shirt and run. She said the experience has haunted them for years, and she avoids that area entirely when she goes home to visit her family. Also, years ago, my sister-in-law was driving by that area, and she said that right where they saw the crawler, she saw a man crossing the road, but he didn't look normal. She described him as being very pale, thin, moving fast, and hunched over. She thought he was sick or something from his movements, like he was hurt, as it seemed like he was holding his chest. She said that as she drove by, she saw the person disappear behind a parked car, and she was baffled because she said he was very tall and didn't understand how someone so large could just disappear like that behind a small, parked vehicle. My sister-in-law doesn't believe in ghosts and wouldn't have a reason to lie about that experience, but I always knew there was something creepy about that patch of groves. A young child also went missing many years ago in that very same area, sadly. Curious to hear your thoughts on this, and stay out of the groves. For a few years now, I've been hearing and experiencing different phenomena. Every time I go outside to smoke a cigarette on my porch, I feel as if I'm being watched or studied. Anytime I'm walking my dog and I hear my father calling my name, even though I know he isn't outside. I live in a valley between two decently sized mountains, Grafton and Mount Anthony, if that helps any, just on the edge of the Appalachian mountain range. Could this be a crawler, or am I just going insane? It's been going on for, like I said, a few years, and I've noticed activity tends to pick up in the winter. During the spring and summer months, it doesn't feel like I'm being watched but beckoned. I got curious last night and was messing around with my flashlight, one of the adjustable lens ones. I set it to its longest range and saw a pure white figure standing on the other side of the pond. I couldn't see its face, but as soon as it turned its head, I turned off my flashlight and went to bed. I'm in my 20s and live in Washington State. I moved in with my mom in October 2018 when I was 16. She lives in a very small mining town northeast of Seattle, with lots of caves, forests, and spread out houses. There isn't even a school in the town. For reference, she lives with 15 people, and she was staying in the trailer behind the house. I don't want to say why she lives with that many people, but it may be obvious. Anyways, 
Her trailer is maybe 50 feet behind the house, and behind her trailer is a huge field with grass about 5 to 8 feet tall, right next to a big deep forest. Nobody lives or even goes back there. It started with people who lived there saying they have been hearing screams and whistles from the forest and field, and that there's been strange activity going on around the property. One night, me, my mom, her boyfriend, and our two dogs were in the trailer around 11.30 to 12 p.m. We heard a dog barking in the distance, except it sounded weird, like the bark was repeating itself. My stepdad pointed out how it doesn't sound like a dog, but the weirdest part is the dog barked all night until I fell asleep around 4 a.m. Our dogs were also barking at whatever was scratching at the door and when it would get near. We also heard scratches on our trailer, and they had to be scratches of a large animal. We thought maybe a cougar or something, and we banged back and told it to go away, but it stayed around for a while. The scratches would happen frequently, and I always felt watched when I would be outside at night around the trailer. One night, we were at a friend's tent around the corner, and after we left around 11.30, we went up to the convenience store up the road. As we were driving back down the road to our trailer, we both saw a pair of glowing orange eyes staring at the car from the woods next to the house. I stayed behind in the car as my mom and stepdad, her boyfriend, whom we saw at the store and took back to the trailer with us, went to the trailer. I could almost feel eyes on me in the car, so I got out and went inside. The weirdest experience I've had during my stay there was definitely the night I was inside the house, and around 4 a.m., my stepdad came in and told me there was a skinwalker outside. It was calling one of the people's names who lived at the house out in the field, let's call him Fred, and said he wanted to show me because he knows I'm into stuff like this, I knew it was probably a windigo or crawler, not a skinwalker. Keep in mind, they started hearing it as soon as Fred got home from work and came home a few minutes before. Sure enough, I went outside, and out in the field, every minute or so, there was what sounded like a woman's voice yelling Fred? In a scared tone. My stepdad mentioned that Fred had a girlfriend who passed away, and this sounded eerily like her but very distorted, and there was a weird sound effect before it would yell out Fred. I almost can't describe it. Well, fast forward 30 minutes or so, and I'm left in the trailer alone. I realized this and really did not want to be out here with whatever this is, so I stepped out to go inside, and I heard something moving around in the field near the trailer. I looked and saw a white head with orange glowing eyes peeking out from the grass, and whatever it was sounded like it was on all fours and was very fast. It watched me walk all the way back into the house. I was creeped out and I'm wondering if this could be a crawler or windigo? I've had more experiences if anyone wants to hear them. Thank you for reading, and I hope to hear back from anyone with some info. So I usually don't really believe in most myths and legends and stuff like that, but something I recently witnessed really made me doubt that. I don't know if I'm just being paranoid but I might have had a very close encounter with something that was most definitely not human and scared me out of my mind. Basically last night I decided to go hang out with a close friend and skateboard around a bit and I met some other friends from school down by a grocery store there. We decided to hang out for a bit, walk around and they told my friend and I that they needed to start walking home and they wanted to show us some apparently cool sketchy treehouse where people always go to hang out and do drugs and what not on the way. We start walking that way mostly through just suburban neighborhoods and at that point it's almost completely dark outside. There were around 7 of us at first and people mostly started heading out until it was just said friend and I and a girl who agreed to take us to see the treehouse since it was fairly close to her house. We walk there and take this pretty open path to a chain link fence with a hole in it. We go through using our phones as flashlights and not far after there's another chain link fence with a hole in it with the treehouse right behind it, surrounded by loose bushes and a small forest. We're pretty scared at that point since it's dark and all that so the friend and the girl stay behind the fence while I go through the hole just outside. After looking at the treehouse for a few seconds we start hearing rustling in the bushes, 
but although scared dismiss it as a small animal or maybe even one of our friends just messing with us since it's pretty close to several houses. Like an idiot I keep standing outside the small hole in the fence, not moving while the rustling keeps moving around. We called out several times to no response and the thing whatever it was kept moving around in the bushes a little bit, rustling every few seconds. I tried looking and could barely see it but guessed that it was around half my height. It keeps moving and after a bit we realize from the footstep patterns that it started waking on two legs. This just about does it for us and we get out of there looking behind us every couple seconds. On our way back, said friend told me earlier by the treehouse he had caught a glimpse of something moving of a whitish gray color a bit bigger than a large dog. I visited this treehouse again today with a couple more friends and actually went up this time but gladly we didn't see or hear anything. And yes, I know I'd be the idiot to die in a horror movie. I am a resident of Indiana, about 30 minutes away from Indianapolis. This story is true, and I will try my absolute hardest to answer any questions with specific details. This all happened between June 2022 and September 2022. I know the June part because I have a video of my drunk friend Kyle at the place where this happened, promising to raid a Kona ice truck with me the next day. I do lean more towards September, though because I remember it being kind of cold and one of the last times we were going to be able to go out there that year. My friends Cy and Kyle were fishing at a parks river that was connected to Geist and invited me and my buddy Cody out to fish with them around 8.30 pm we both weren't too keen on fishing, but we went just to chill because we all generally got along well. When we first arrived, they came up and said hi to us and gave a brief explanation of how the night's been so far. The gist was the fishing was shit but the times were good. They also casually mentioned in a joking manner that they heard movement around them, and Kyle said something along the lines of don't worry Sam, I'll take it on with my bare hands. Now it's been two years, but I'm like 99% sure he said some cocky remark along those lines. Kyle's the type of guy to say some shit like that. We all brushed it off and thought it was funny and ended up hanging around the campfire for a while. Now, some notable things that happened between now and when I first saw it were. We did throw a dead battery from a light we had into the fire to see what would happen. I don't know if batteries make you see crazy shit, but you know, we did it. I don't think it explains us all seeing the same thing, even if it had some effect on us. Cy drank a beer, and so did Kyle, but not me and Cody, we both are sober people. We didn't catch any fish which was kind of lame. At around 10 PM, we all were kind of ready to go home because of how dark it had gotten and how bad the fishing was. We were about to start packing. Now, this park has a small trail, and at the end of it is a big open lake. I thought, hey, before we leave for good, we might as well walk to the lake and see it, then walk back to the cars. Everyone generally thought this was a good idea, and we were going to start walking once packed. They were about 80% done packing when I decided I'm gonna start ahead of them a little bit, so I walked about 300 feet down the trail until I saw some huge white thing move from the right side of the path to the left side pretty far down the trail. This honestly scared the shit out of me, but I had no flashlight, and in all honesty, I thought to myself, hey, that seemed creepy as f, but it might have been a deer and I might just be crazy. So I walked back to the group, and since I was two years younger than Cy and Kyle, I didn't want to mention it, lest I get called a pussy, which was pretty much a death sentence for my ego since at the time I was a sophomore. After they finished packing, we all got ready to walk and got a little further down on the trail than I did on my own. And then, with a flashlight shine down the trail, we saw it. Now, this being two years ago, I don't remember everything, but here are some things I do 100% know I saw. It walked on all fours, its joints didn't move when it walked, it had no fur, only pale skin. It was thin, and you could see its spine protruding from its back, the same way you can see someone's ribs when they're malnourished, 
and it had a short neck with an unidentifiable face. It probably stood about five to six foot. It walked very fast from one side to the other and genuinely felt evil. I just called Kyle, explained this post, and asked him to do his best to describe it to me. The only thing that differed in his description was it stood on two legs and was a little taller. After calling Kyle, I called Sai and had him do the same. He gave a much deeper description. It walked on four legs but came up once and stood on the back too. It was kind of like the front two legs were arms that it could also walk on. He said the creature was long, said the joints didn't move. He also said it had no feet, kind of a nub, which I 100% remember and agree with. Skin looked like it was stretched over its body to the point you could see bones. Like wearing a shirt that's way too small. After we saw it, we all stood in baffled, frozen in fear. I asked, we all saw that right? And everyone said yes. Cody was behind us, so he didn't see the full thing, but he 100% agrees he saw a flash of white and agrees it happened. We immediately turned around and started back to the cars. Sai and I were behind, looking at where we saw it. Kyle and Cody were looking forward, leading us back to where we parked. Once we got out of the wooded trail, Sai said he saw it for a second watching us leave, stating it must have gone into the woods about 30 feet and kept pace with us as we left. I remember getting into my car scared as F. Our immediate thought was that we must have seen a skinwalker but I'm not so sure after all this time. We all 100% believe in what we saw, and after bringing it up to Cody, Kyle, and Sai, we know what happened. I live about 6 to 7 minutes away from where this happened and am honestly terrified that one day I'll see it again. I'm posting this in a few subreddits looking for answers and thoughts on it, and I'll be here to answer any questions you have. Thank you for reading my account of the story. This occurred in 2023 in downtown Colorado Springs. We were exploring tunnels close to a river or close to Fountain Creek open space. What is up everyone? So a buddy and I had a pretty strange and utterly terrifying experience. We both enjoy urbexing and discovered a series of underground tunnels or like storm drains that probably went as far as a mile and a half. Anyway, we made our way to the tunnels, got our flashlights and my camera. We were just shooting the shit and when we got maybe halfway through, the tunnel narrowed to where we were hunched over instead of being able to fully stand up. We then heard a loud scream that sounded like a lady, but not human. Overall it sounded most like a mountain lion scream or look it up. It's a terrifying sound. After we heard this, we both froze and listened. I was shining my light down the tunnel, where I saw something pale moving towards us. I probably only saw it for like 4 seconds until I broke out of my shock and my buddy and I were running hunched over in these dark tunnels. I didn't have my camera video on, but I dropped it and sure as hell will never go back to retrieve it. I thought I was hallucinating or something, but my friend saw the exact same thing. The creature we saw was unlike anything I've ever seen. It was completely pale and looked sickly or emaciated. The body looked somewhat human but not quite. The face resembled that of a horse or not as big of a snout though. Really f strange. If I had to compare it to anything, it would be the above image. The face especially looked like that of this particular picture of the Pope Lick monster. It's like if you took the head of the Pope Lick monster photo and placed it on the body of a deer standing on its hind legs. I suck at photo editing, so perhaps someone could photoshop something like this to get a more accurate depiction of the creature? I still get the chills even just thinking about this experience. My friend and I vowed to never explore tunnels again, obviously. I always thought there was no such thing as humanoid creatures until I experienced this. I enjoyed listening to like skinwalker stories, but I always thought they were pure fiction. A deep part of me just wants to know what it is and if it was harmful? Did we escape a potentially deadly situation? Why are not more people seeing these things? There has to be more right? Why does no one have legit photos of humanoids? If you all have an idea of what this could have been or if you've had a similar experience, please share. 
I am utterly scared and baffled. Update March 18th, 20th 24. Hey everyone. I've been getting a bunch of requests to pin the tunnel we went to and to go back and film. This story is 100% true. I am terrified to go back, but I do want to provide the most proof I possibly can. My buddy and I know what happened. I texted my homie about trying to find the exact location or we've been to so many tunnels and there are a shit ton of tunnels on the same river that goes through Fountain Creek. Okay, this might not actually be crawler related, but I've been seeing crawlers for years and journaling about their activities, so I thought this might still be okay for me to post here. I haven't actually seen the crawlers at all this fall and winter, whereas I've been seeing them every fall or winter for the past three years. So, this new entity. All I could see of it a few nights ago was this warm orange light. For a brief moment, I thought I was seeing a fire in the distance beyond the trees, but then this light moved, and I could see that it was down around my barn in the woods behind it. As I said, there was an orange light. I think I saw a pair of them. So presumably, these are eyes. I couldn't see any of its body, unfortunately, but the way it moved was odd. After watching it down at the barn for a moment, it started to move in the direction I was also moving, to take my dog to his poop spot. It kept pace with me, watching me the whole way from the woods, it was moving parallel to me rather than directly following me. I'm struggling with how to comprehend the way it moves, though. Honestly, my first instinct is that it moves like a bipedal dinosaur that keeps its front half close to the ground. It wasn't as low on the ground as the crawlers, but it wasn't as tall as the possible dogmen. Its movement was also very smooth, steady. Crawlers bounce around, and the maybe dogmen make enormous footsteps. I'm going to keep looking for it, but in the meantime, has anyone heard of anything similar to this? I'm located in the southeast US in the foothills of the Appalachians. I have seen groups of crawlers, something around 10 feet tall that I'm calling maybe dogmen, I haven't been able to see them clearly, just silhouette and the echoes of those footsteps that live in my mind. My nephew and his two friends actually saw one, though, and now this entity, which seems to have a much higher tolerance for the cold. Any information, ideas, hypotheses or theories, folklore, or experiences will be immensely appreciated. This happened when I was about 14 years old. My family lived on a farm surrounded by open fields that were dotted here and there by heavily wooded areas. I used to love to go out with my dog in the grounds of the farm, whilst my dad and granddad worked with livestock and machinery in and out of the various outbuildings that we had. We had a nice neighbor renting one of the converted cottages on site and it was in his yard that I witnessed something I'll never forget. A bit of context, there's a lot of natural and rustic beauty around where my parents' farm was, and healthy populations of wild animals. Rabbits, hares, foxes, deer, badgers, it was always a truly magical place to someone who started out growing up in the city. Anyway, to the main account of what I saw. I was busy attaching my dog's lead to his harness on the road leading around from the front of the house, past my neighbor's house and into open fields once over a cattle grid. Our neighbor was away for the weekend to see friends and I always did a courtesy check of his place while he was away, just, moving mail out of the rain, checking that things looked okay, making sure gates were latched and things. I got around the corner and my blood turned to ice. It was one of those feelings that you know is the most primal, deepest fear that oozes straight out of your soul. In my neighbor's woodshed, was an animal, a creature, a being, that I had no recognition of. It was very thin, with unnaturally long arms, legs, almost like a deer, body compact, limbs long and bony. It was rifling around the stack of wood my neighbor had drying out in the shed from a tree he had recently felled. The being was almost a frog-like texture, with bulbous and unsettling eyes, a pinched mouth with barely any lips, a bloated pot of a stomach but a clear lithe and agile build. 
It was making these snuffling grunts. Like. Busy noises. It was picking up bits of wood and sniffing at them and seemingly perplexed by the clunk of. The wood when it dropped it back onto the pile. My dog was as still as I was. He was a German pointer so I was used to seeing him make that firm, hunting pose. But he was eerily rigid and hackles were up. My dog eventually let out one of his gruff, half barks that he usually made when curious or startled by something. At the sound, the being absolutely buckled like it had the shock of its life. It scrabbled around like a big, sloppy spider with its arms and legs grasping for balance. It glanced at us only briefly, made what I could only describe as a gurgly, vomit-like sound and bound away effortlessly over the fence like a deer. Hardly any effort and it was able to clear quite an impressive fence without coming close to the barbed wire. It ran like a dog with long front legs and short back legs. Almost like a greyhound. It took me a long time to go for a walk confidently again after that, I didn't even know what to call it. It didn't look like anything, it doesn't seem to want anything, and other than being terrified by my encounter, I didn't feel like I was in danger. But it was a cryptid in every sense of the word. To this day, I'm not even going to speculate about what it was. But I know I saw something I shouldn't have that day. What was interesting in the great scheme of things, was that there was another farmer who lived a few fields over from us, who was always ridiculed for believing in UFOs and strange beings and things. You'd often hear him spouting on in the pub about green aliens and what have you. But after witnessing that, whatever it was, it always made me wonder if he had seen something too. Until right now I have shared this with maybe four people because it sounds crazy. This happened back in 2001 so the internet wasn't very helpful back then. I lived in Roanoke, Virginia in a wooded area with my family. We lived on a big hill surrounded by only woods. I returned home around 2 am and was young teen at the time I parked my car and turned on overhead lamp to roll up a joint. It was a nice night so I had the windows down and would always hear noises but never thought nothing because there were tons of animals around. Anyway I roll up and smoke and also pull out my art pad and start to draw so overhead lamp is still on and had music softly playing for maybe an hour I did this. Finally I was tired and ready to go inside so I reached up and turned off the overhead lamp in the car and when I did I could now obviously see outside the car now and directly in front of me maybe 12 feet slumped down in front of my brother's jeep is this pale, skinny, long-armed and long-legged creature. It was looking right at me like it had been there a while. It was also intelligent enough to know that once I cut that inside lamp off I could now see outside and knew I could see it. I only saw it for maybe 3 seconds until it realized it and it bolted to the back of the house like a cheetah almost. I was scared and stuck in place at what I saw. I was too scared to get out and ended up driving around for hours until the sun came up. I returned home and finally went inside. I immediately the that day tried to rationalize and asked my dad and brother were they outside at 3 am last night to which they laughed and said heck no. That house always scared myself and my brothers. We actually called the cops another time because we thought someone was trying to rob the place because we kept hearing noises on back deck door one night. This sighting I had of that creature was burned in my brain now 2024 so almost 24 years later I'm still curious to what I saw. Even more crazy as years went by in the internet. Became what it is. I remember the first time I came across a pic of the what some call a skinwalker. And my heart stopped. It's that famous pic where it slumped down on all fours in the exact position I saw it in that night. Moves the same way they say and limbs were long just like those stories. It felt good to know I wasn't alone and crazy. But still so many questions. I felt I would share in hopes maybe others have seen this thing and will share. We are not alone on this planet. Are they aliens? Whatever it was it didn't harm me. My window was down the entire time it could have snuck up on me and easily harmed me. It seemed to only watch me. Also it happened so fast to me the face had a small mouth, with big eyes and didn't see a nose. Very very pale though. 
Thanks for reading. My boyfriend and I were outside last night, watching the stars on a nice, clear, cold winter night, maybe about minus 10 Celsius. We had heard noises in the area before, usually from across the street. It sounded like a big circular saw. It made no sense for someone to be using a circular saw at 1.30 am, but what made even less sense was that the sound came from three different directions. It started at one house, then 10 seconds later, at the house beside it, and then in the bush behind both, sounded further. Mr. Brave Boy, my boyfriend, went up to the road and yelled, Kwai. I told him, are you sure you want to attract something that makes noises like this? We waited in silence. A few moments later, we heard the sawing like screech much closer, and I heard what sounded like bipedal steps. I turned on the headlamp, but I saw nothing. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I didn't really want to see it. I had this deep sense of unease and just told him we should go back home now. We backtracked to the house and went to bed. So, for starters, I was just trying to fall asleep in my room but couldn't because I felt watched. So, I did what I always do and turned on my phone flashlight. There, by my closet, was a creature. It had long fingers, elongated arms and legs, porcelain-like skin, reflective eyes, and it was so bony, as if its skin had almost no muscle, just laying over bones. This creature was crouched, just staring at me. It wasn't moving, blinking, or even breathing. It just stared. At first, I thought I had been imagining it, so I turned my flashlight off. But when I turned it back on, the creature was still there, staring. So, I turned over and fell asleep. The next night, the thing was in the same place, just outside my closet but also by a doll cabinet in my room, doing the same thing as last time. So. I just went to sleep again. After that, I had enough of this entity watching me sleep, so I went to my sister's room and explained to her in more detail what happened. Suddenly, the room went from feeling really safe to just feeling a seething rage from outside the door to my sister's room. We both went quiet, wondering if she could also feel the heavy presence. Eventually, we both decided to go to bed. Then, in the afternoon, my sister made me this little pouch to ward it off, but I insisted I didn't need it. That night, I could feel its presence again, so I snatched that little pouch, and it's been gone ever since. This happened to me around the middle of 2022 near Northern Sydney. I live in an old house that backs onto a national park. While this national park is beautiful, whenever I walk through there, I always have a feeling that I'm being watched or followed. In this national park, there are plenty of Bigfoot built structures, but those are for a whole other story. My house is very old, so the plumbing is very loud and will often wake up other people in the house. So, at about 1.30 am to 2.30 am on the night I had to go to the toilet, I decided to go and pee in my backyard which overlooks the national park and a small path. As I'm finishing up, I feel a sinister feeling, almost like murderous intent. As I feel this, the hair on my arms and legs starts to stick up, and I feel a shiver down my spine. I'm now looking directly into the national park, and that's when I see this thing. It's about 8 to 9 feet tall, very thin, with long stiff limbs. It's almost emitting a white light, like a glow but not really, and its head is tube-shaped, almost like a long soda can. I freeze up as I see this thing. I'm facing west, and it's walking south. It turns its head to the left and stares at me for what feels like a year, as if it was contemplating what to do, then starts walking directly towards me. I immediately sprint back into my house and lock the back door. I've never seen this thing since, and no one in my area has had any similar experiences. I'm not sure if this is a crawler, but from the descriptions I've read, there are some similarities. 
Has anyone else seen or experienced something like this? This happened around five years ago. I was at home when suddenly I heard a loud crash not far from my house. It was so loud that I felt the ground shake. In front of my house, there is a decent sized patch of woods. It was around dusk, not dark but not light either. As I walked into the woods in the direction of the sound, I felt like something was watching me but saw nothing and heard nothing. A short way in, maybe 100 yards, I found a rather healthy big tree that was knocked over. It was very fresh, and the smell was still in the air. I took some photos and started on my way out. That's when I started to hear something walking behind me. No matter how hard I looked, I saw nothing. I was almost out of the woods when I heard something fall from a tree and hit the ground. It hit so hard that it made the ground shake a little. It charged after me, and I could hear it running. When I got out of the woods, I looked back in and saw absolutely nothing. I thought it was a bear until I started reading about crawlers. At the time, our neighbor was telling us that something was living around his house that would growl at him as he went to work around 6 a.m. some mornings. Could this have been a crawler? I am a 20-year-old woman and my husband and I live in Richmond, Virginia, which is where this story takes place. I don't mind revealing where we live as it is important to my story's moral. About two weeks ago we decided that we wanted to get season passes to King's Dominion, which is the biggest amusement park in our state. We were a little short on cash to get the passes and were in between paychecks, so we decided to sell some of our old things on an app called Let Go, which is basically like Craigslist where you can post items you have for sale and it shows it to everyone within a 50 mile radius of your location. The only way let go it is different from Craigslist is that you have to make an account on let go, which can be made with your email account or by syncing it to your Facebook. No personal information is given out besides your name, your general area, and a tiny thumbnail or whatever your profile picture is on Facebook. You are also able to chat with other buyers and sellers through a messaging system on the app to keep your phone numbers anonymous. Anyways, I had posted my old tablet on let go to make up for the money we still needed to get the passes and within a few minutes I got a message from a woman named Kisha who was interested in buying my tablet. One thing I noticed about Kisha's account is that it didn't have a thumbnail picture. I brushed it off thinking that she just didn't sync it with her Facebook. This was red flag number one. The conversation with Kisha went as follows. Kisha, hi is the tablet still available? Me, yes, it is. Kisha, great, can I pick it up in two hours when I get off? Me, actually my husband and I are trying to get KD passes today so we can go this evening. I could drop it off to you now if that's okay. Kisha, yeah that works. I work at the McDonald's off 9 mile road. Me, okay great. Can you send me the address so I can head over? Kisha, sure. Now. The conversation stopped there for a bit after I had asked Kisha for the address to her McDonald's, since that area has quite a few of them. She didn't respond for a while, which now looking back after everything that happened, should have been a red flag number two. But at the time, I figured she was slow to reply because she told me that she was at work. My husband was with me so I asked him if he knew which one it was and he looked up on Google where McDonald's were on 9 Mile Road and there actually was only one store on that road. I copied the address from Google and messaged her back 10 minutes after hearing nothing new from her asking if this was the right address. Me, hey is it the one at blah 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 9 Mile Road? Kisha, yeah that's it me, okay I will be there in about 20 minutes Kisha. Okay message me when you are here so I can tell my manager I need to run out to my car so I can meet you. Me, alright, see you soon. After that, my husband and I jumped in his truck and drove to the McDonald's that she worked at. We had to take the highway and it was rush hour by the time we got on the highway, so what was supposed to be a 20 minute drive turned out to be a 40 minute drive. The whole time we were driving there Kisha would send me messages saying where are you? 
She did this about four or five times, and each time I would tell her something along the lines of sorry, traffic is brutal only a few minutes away. We finally got to the McDonald's and parked in the parking lot right in front of the main entrance. My husband suggested that we sit on the bed of his truck, because he didn't want to sketch Kisha out by making her walk up to the window of a stranger's car. I agreed, and we hopped out of his truck and he pulled down the little hitch door to his bed and we sat on it. I then pulled out my phone and messaged Kisha saying hey I'm here. She replied very quickly with okay, what car are you? I told her I was in the big orange truck. We waited for about 5 minutes staring at the door waiting for her to come out and no females walked out of the restaurant. The only person who did walk out was a tall, skinny man on a cell phone who got picked up in a black car that had pulled up next to ours. At this point, my husband and I were tired of waiting, so I went back on let go to see if she had messaged me something new. I looked up our conversation and at the top of our messages was a banner that read this user has blocked you. I showed my husband this, and because we listened to so many horror stories on YouTube, we both got creeped out, and my husband got very angry. He told me to wait in the truck with the doors locked while he went inside the McDonald's and asked the manager if anybody named Kisha worked there, taking my phone with him to show evidence of our conversation. So I did just that, and waited in the truck with my finger glued to the lock button. A few minutes later he comes back to the truck with a concerned look on his face. He told me that the manager said that there was a girl named Kisha that worked there, but she spelled her name Kisha instead of Kisha, and she had been sent home at 11 this morning because of business decline. It was in that moment that I put two and two together. The only person we saw come out of the restaurant was a man on a phone, who quickly got into a car parked next to ours. I never told Kisha that I was coming with my husband. For all that they knew, I was just coming by myself a good 15 miles away from where I lived in the bad part of town. I was terrified. We peeled it out of the parking lot and raced back home. On the way back, I deleted my let go app. Now, I know this sounds like a lot of speculation but I am almost certain that this I was almost the victim of abduction because there have been several cases of women in Richmond other areas of Virginia who have used let go and other resell apps like it and have gone missing, been robbed at gunpoint, or been taken in by human traffickers. This story isn't really as scary as it could have been, and I am very grateful for how lucky I was. I'm forever thankful that my husband came along with me, because if he didn't, there's a good chance I wouldn't be typing this story tonight. But I really wanted to tell my story as a way to spread awareness that there are some very evil people out there, in everyone's cities, and even in your neighborhoods. They will use every method of communication to find their next victims, even resell websites and apps, to lower someone in and do unspeakable things to them. Abductions resulting in human trafficking cases are at a national all-time high, and are only getting worse. Please, be careful of who you talk to online. If you do sell something on one of these apps, on Craigslist, or any other resell site where you have to meet the other person in person, always meet in a public place at a popular time of day. Bring somebody with you. Never let them come to your house, or you theirs. It's crazy to think about how cautious we have to be nowadays, and I hope all these evils and crimes go away soon. But until then, Please be safe and be smart. I've been looking to sell my car before the summer is over, so I took to Facebook and Craigslist to find potential buyers in the area who were willing to take it off my hands. I posted my ad on Facebook Marketplace, which is essentially Craigslist for Facebook where you can buy and sell products around your approximate location. I figured it would be the perfect place to find someone near me who was in the market for an old fixer-upper, my piece of junk, that is. I should add at this point that I'm a 22-year-old woman, and on Marketplace obviously you post from your Facebook account, so whoever sees my posts can go to my profile to message me. Unfortunately, unlike Craigslist, people knew exactly who I was before they were buying. I had several people interested, so I answered them in order and the first person just so happened to be an older woman. From her page, 
She looked harmless, so I thought it would be no problem. I was busy for a few days so I told her I'd get back to her soon, and she said okay. Her last message to me said that's fine. Let me know Thursday. Bill. A little weird, but I thought maybe her husband was messaging me for her from her account, or maybe it was even a typo. Who knows? I gave her the benefit of the doubt. On Thursday, I got a random message from another account, a man who will call Bill. He messaged me the exact same message as she did the day before, which was something along the lines of interested, when can I come see it? I put two and two together and realized that the woman signed Bill on her last message the day before and I figured it was her husband now contacting me from his own account. I asked if he was the one who messaged me from her account the day before, and he confirmed, saying that she was his wife who had passed away back in March. Strange. But everyone has their own way of coping. At this point, I felt bad for the guy, and there weren't really any alarm bells going off, other than that it was slightly weird he was contacting me from his dead wife's Facebook. It was also weird that his Facebook didn't have any photos of himself, just his backyard as his profile picture and cover photo. I chalked it up to him being older and not caring about social media. He ended up saying he'd like to see the car and we scheduled a day for him to come look at it. Unfortunately, I had to give him my house address because the car's brakes are not in working order and the car isn't insured, so I couldn't take it on the road to somewhere nearby to meet up. Regardless, I was still not too worried because my boyfriend and his mother were at the house, I live with them in the summertime, so I thought if push came to shove, there would be someone there to mediate. He was supposed to come at 3.30, but 3.30 came and went without him showing up. He said he lived in a town about a half hour away, so we waited a little while after to see if maybe he would come late. I was pissed for a while because he just wasted my time confirming he wanted to see my car and possibly buy it, and he stood me up without any explanation. Around 4, I gave up and started playing some games on my laptop. My boyfriend, bless his soul, still kept watch over the driveway to see if Bill would come out after all. Suddenly, he had urgency in his voice. Alyssa. I think that's him. I got up and ran to the window just in time to see a small car with an unknown driver and a young man in the front seat pull away from the front of our driveway. Apparently, the car pulled in front of the house and sat there for several seconds before driving away, and I just caught the tail end of it. I live on a quiet side street of a pretty safe suburban neighborhood, so it most likely wasn't some random stranger who just so happened to be passing by, they were definitely in front of the house waiting for a minute. My boyfriend looked disturbed and kept repeating that he was sure it was them, and that they got cold feet. We all thought it was weird that they would drive a half hour only to leave. My boyfriend's mother said she thought it was because they thought they could get me, a vulnerable young woman, alone, and that they'd sped away once they saw that there were several cars in the driveway. One of the cars was the one I was selling, too and it looked exactly like in the photos I posted on Marketplace, so I was sure the car wasn't the issue. The most disturbing thing to me was the fact that there were two people in the car, and at least one of them looked like he was capable of doing something, should I have been alone? Thank God in hindsight that there were several people home, or the situation definitely could have escalated. I really, really wish I hadn't given them my address, and I can only hope that those people don't ever come back. I don't post a lot, and English is not my first language, so I apologize if there's anything wrong here. I live in a tall building directly in front of a big wooded area with a creek running through it. Both my mom and I saw a crawler not too long ago. It was pale, had long limbs, and crawled on all fours, among other characteristics. I found this subreddit while searching for information about what we both saw. There are a few birds around that only make sounds during the morning, but at 1 AM last night, I heard what sounded like something trying to mimic an owl but mixed with another sound of another bird. As soon as I heard it, I got chills, and it was coming from the wooded area. 
I thought it was weird to have a crawler so near to me since all sightings are in North America, but I'm 100% sure of what I saw, and I don't doubt it could really live here, considering my whole part of the town was native land. Can crawlers mimic sounds? Has anybody seen crawlers up around the northern part of Georgia? I was hiking up Blood Mountain a couple of months ago with some friends. At one point on a steeper section of the trail, I can't remember which trail, just that we started on the Freeman Trail, I was trailing behind because I stopped to put some stuff in my bag. When I was catching up and looked to the left of me to see the water flowing down, I saw something which I think matches this sub's description of one. I would have forgotten about it, but as far as I know, the only animals in that area that can grow to be the size of the crawlers you guys describe are black bears, and not only are they not pale, but they typically are around the lower parts of the mountain. I'm still pretty doubtful because it's a pretty popular trail here in Georgia. So. My friends live in the deep woods of North Carolina. The land they live on has always felt very off. You do not want to be on that property by yourself, regardless of whether it's day or night. Multiple people, including myself, have seen this same creature. It is tall, skinny, pale in color, and has white antlers. It hides behind trees and seems to blend in with the tree line. Whenever we see it, it's always at night and it also makes you feel dread when you see it. In the woods around this house, it's almost like everything is either dead silent or there are too many sounds at once, like rustling in the trees, leaves being stepped on, etc. Out of all the times we've seen this creature, we can only compare it to a mix of a hide behind and a windigo. The other thing is that we feel that whatever this creature is, it's influencing us from inside the house as well. The front door they have has a glass window in the middle of it, which is opaque. You can't see through it perfectly, but you can tell if someone or something is outside. Anyways, we have all been too scared to open the door when this happens, but sometimes in the middle of the night, we can see something white moving quickly in front of the front door from inside. We also hear footsteps on the other side of the house, among other issues. I'm wondering if this is from this same creature influencing the inside of the house. Anyways, this thing is really freaking us out, but when we try looking up things like this, we cannot find anything similar at all. Thanks for reading.